Hi, my name is Claudia. I'm a registered physiotherapist with Proactive. And today I want to talk about the importance of ribcage mobility and your pelvic floor muscles. We have three muscles. In general, you're going to have your diaphragm, which is a dome shape like muscle that is at the base of your lungs, help with digestion, circulation, and breathing. The psoas, which goes from your lower back to your hips, and it's gonna help bringing your knee to your chest, rotating your torso, and side bending. And we have the coccygeus, which is a muscle that is attached to your tailbone, and it's part of the posterior pelvic floor. As far as the posterior pelvic floor, it's going to be bringing support to your pelvic floor and it's also going to allow for the flexion of your tailbone. It works with the pubo rectalis, which is a muscle that is going to help control also your sphincter. When there's tension or hyperactivity of your pelvic floor, this may affect the tension of your hips, the tension of your sacrum and tailbone, lower back, and it may also affect tension in the pelvic floor creating issues with continence, sexual function, and support. This can be caused by direct impact of your diaphragm. If there's tension in your chest area and the diaphragm is not able to move how it should be, it's gonna create tension in the fascia, which is a tissue that wraps around the muscles. In this case, the fascia of the psoas is attached to the diaphragm and to the coccygeus. If the diaphragm becomes tight, it's going to tense up part of that fascia, creating, creating also tension in your psoas and going down into the coccyx, creating tension as well. We're going to do three exercises. For all of them, if they feel uncomfortable on your knee, you can always try to fold your mat or just use a pillow. The two first exercises can also be done standing when your foot on a stool. So for the first exercise, we're going to stretch the front of your hip. You're going to make sure that you're tucking really gently your tailbone and you go as far forward as you feel that there's tension in your hip. Make sure not to arch your lower back and make sure not to lean forward. If you're not feeling the tension on your tailbone, try to make sure that you tuck in and you go slowly until you feel that there's tension here. Don't let your body compensate and continue with the movement and losing the tension of the ellipsoas. You can also add some rotation at the end of that tension and slowly go back. For all of these exercises, you can go with your breathing and you can go and move Or just stay there for about 30 seconds, trying to make sure that you continue to breathe. I will do something more dynamic before running or before playing a sport. And I will do something more of a relaxation of a 30 seconds, one minute, if I'm practicing a whole routine of yoga or if I'm trying to get a good maybe 20 minutes of a stretch with other exercises. Now, for the next exercise, you're going to place your leg against the wall. And you're going to make sure that it stay there, hip and knee. Open your arms and you're going to breathe in as your chest expands and you're going to close and breathe out. For this exercise, you can also do it standing if the knee is uncomfortable. For the next exercise, you can keep the mat folded or you can just open the mat, have your legs uh, your hands down and try to reach over with the thread of the needle exercise. You can go as low as you feel comfortable bending that arm and placing maybe your head on a pillow or on a yoga block. You can also do this exercise using your hand on your head and twisting in and out. The same if you have any issues with your wrist you can have your arms down and try to twist away. These are the three exercises that will help improving your thoracic mobility.